My name is Chrissy. I'm a life skills and deployment educator at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. I'm here today to bring you a series of reintegration briefs um, um, on homecoming and reintegration, specifically for family members, whether you are in an intimate relationship with a service member, a child, or an extended family member, or a loved one. These are going to be tailored specifically to those clients. If you are an active duty service member and you're looking for reintegration briefs, I would point you to our return and reunion curriculum. And you can reach out to us at our centralized scheduling number or our email address that I'll provide at the end of the brief um, if you want to get access to those courses. Similar, um, similar content, but different audience that we're going to be addressing today. Now, all of these videos that are on our YouTube channel or have been disseminated through a disc um, are meant to specifically tailor our briefs and meet with our clients during the global pandemic. And with that said, family members at home, when you are welcoming back a service member from deployment, you are going to need to provide some additional help and consideration and education with that service member to let them know how things have changed since they have left. Even so much as even if they have only been gone for a short period of time. We wanna make sure that they understand what the current restrictions are, um, how your life situation has changed during lockdown or stay at home orders or just restricted movement. And then also help them um, find a way to celebrate the end of a deployment without all of the additional ways that you might do that, going on trips, visiting bars, um, going out to eat, uh, having people come and stay at your house. These may or may not be available to you during the time that you might be celebrating homecoming. So think about yourself as a ambassador, as a mentor in that situation, and regularly be communicating with them what you're experiencing during this pandemic how it's affecting you both emotionally and logistically, and then let them know uh, how things are changing so that they can be along for the process as well. Life for them, depending on where they are, might be very, very different. Their social norms and their social customs might not be the same as what you're experiencing at home. So make sure you regularly check in with them and update them on how things are changing for you and your family. So I wanna actually clarify something too before I jump too deep into this brief. Homecoming, I refer to during this brief as one day. That would be the one day you welcome a service member home after being on a deployment, after being on a ship, after being um, away for a long period of time. Homecoming is the one day you wish you welcome them back and uh, celebrate. Reintegration is a process, a long, sometimes long, sometimes shorter, process where you are getting reacquainted welcoming a service member back into your home or back into your orbit or your world. So this is a longer period of time. This is a process. This is a, an event, one day an event. All right, so we're gonna do this, jump into this general homecoming and reintegration brief. We're gonna talk about deployment experiences and sharing those amongst, uh, with your service member and with your family. Also reach out to other people who are in similar positions that you are. If you are regularly reaching out to people as a part of a family readiness group, an FRG, or you're ombudsman, or you're meeting with other military spouses and family members who are experiencing the same um, homecoming, deployment, pandemic that you are, um, this is a good opportunity for you to share your experiences with them as well. We're gonna also cover emotional reactions. Um, and how that is how that has changed in our current climate and then a little bit about operational stress operational stress is a general brief it's training that most service members get regularly I think it's great it's a great idea to implement this to use it not only with the service members at work but then use that back at home with your family members your children your spouse and people who are your loved ones all right so we have another series of briefs that talk about the emotional cycle of deployment and the stages. I just wanna pinpoint that you would be, if you're watching this brief, you might be in the anticipation of return or you might still be in recovery and stabilization. This is kind of the moment where it clicks, 
hey, I've got a service member coming home now uh, for uh, spouses and family members. This might be where you start tidying the home, you start making plans, you start thinking about what life will be like when service member returns home. Uh, so that is stage five. That's probably where you are at the moment. And if you're not, that's okay too. These are not um, standard for everyone, okay? The next one would be the return and renegotiation. I didn't say reintegration, I said renegotiation. Reintegration is stage seven with stabilization. And then it starts again at stage one. Either the cycle has been completed for the end of a deployment or in many situations with active duty service members, we start the process of getting ready for another deployment. So I wanna cover three different areas Next, we're gonna talk about the homecoming, the event itself, renegotiation, which is what it sounds like. It is a negotiation process to get back into the home with the service member once they've been away for a period of time. And then the reintegration process. So we're in one, two, three. So we're gonna cover some tips, tools, and tricks with that. So let's talk about the homecoming first. Now we have let our clients know, our family members of service members, that homecoming will probably look different than previous homecomings. So if you have experienced one before, be ready for this to look a little different. Now, what exactly that will look like? I don't know. I know that homecoming will not be the same as, pre as previous homecomings. And I also know that this is a good opportunity for you to reach out to your point of contacts that you have. Your ombudsman should have some information, your family readiness group. If you have a homecoming committee, those are um, good people to reach out to, but they should be communicating the general restrictions and requirements. I would be planning for several backup plans, okay? Um, you might have always welcomed home a service member at the pier with signs, with your family there. There might have always been bands. There might have always been an opportunity for you to get the pictures you wanted. Um, be prepared for that possibly not to happen. So I suggest for people who are planning homecoming plans, plan for an A plan. Hey, everything's great. We can prepare and go ahead with homecoming as usual. B plan. Maybe that means, and this is different for everyone, this is just a suggestion, uh, maybe that means everyone can attend, um, but only certain types of family members because we wanna um, allow for social distancing. Maybe that means we can't have as many vendors or outside organizations attend. Um, plan C might look like, hey, we can go and meet the, uh, the service member, but we can't exit our vehicle. Uh, so not exactly probably what you want to do, but that could be um, an option. And then plan D might be, hey, ship's going to come in or the unit's going to come through, but we're not going to be able to be there and gather as a group. Uh, so we'll either need to just pick them up at a, at a certain time or have the service member make their way to us in whatever form they plan to. So these are not ideal situations, but I want you to start exercising some different plans backup plans, backup to the backup plans, because we don't know exactly the way that homecoming will occur depending on which types of units and commands are coming back and at what point they will be coming back. So take into account what's going on right now. Let your service member know what's happening with your access to base or your access to um, restaurants or your access to just generally move about the state or city and then kind of give yourself some options so that you're prepared for each. But don't, um, don't let that think that you can't celebrate. It doesn't mean that you can't have special ways that you welcome home service members. It just means that you need to get creative, okay? And we've all watched these videos during pandemic of ways that uh, family members have been able to spend time together even though they're apart. Um, ways that people have celebrated birthday parties or milestones or graduations and really take your creative juices and find a way to implement and still celebrate and still honor what has happened while keeping people safe and healthy and following the restrictions that we have all been accustomed to. So keeping it simple, I will say that's a nice thing to um, encourage as well. Um, and don't try to overschedule. 
I have taught courses to active duty service members coming back from deployment and most of them do not want or expect crowded, loud, overscheduled homecomings. Now that's not everyone, you should ask your service member, but most of the time the conversations I have include, I just want to go home, have a home cooked meal or my favorite takeout, I want to settle into my comfortable clothes, melt onto the couch and sleep in the next day. Something to that effect. They're usually very simple plans. And the service member will have been accustomed to a lot of people and a lot of gathering and um, kind of a monotonous schedule. So think too, simple plans can sometimes be the best plan. So don't over schedule, plan for backup plans, allow for, um, for ideas to be different, unique, and something that will still be fun and exciting, but maybe think about saving some of the big um, firework plans for later when the service member has had time to relax. All right, I'll see you for part two of this general reintegration brief.